Hi, how are you? Good evening. My name is Michelle Jordan, and I'm the Director of External Affairs for Pennsylvanians for Modern Courts. And we are so excited to be here this evening. Thank you for spending the next 45 minutes with us. Um, I'd like to introduce you to one of our co-speakers and presenters, Maureen Farrell. Maureen Farrell um, is um, at the law firm, serves both the Pennsylvania and New Jersey, providing convenience, experience, and value. Um, she protects families' future um, and helps plan for small business success. Um, she has um, Maureen um, cares deeply about her clients and works diligently. <laughs> Maureen, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. sure. I've been practicing uh, in the estate planning and estate administration guardianship area uh, for about 15 years now. So this is all I do. It's, it's this one area. I, I'm not a general practitioner. Um, and I've met a lot of people over the years uh, from younger people, 20s and 30s I plan for, 40s and 50s. Um, I also do some Medicaid planning to help with that um, because at various stages of life, planning is different. Um, so I'm happy to report that I was a super lawyer a few years and um, I'm very active in nonprofit organizations and giving lectures and uh, educational opportunities like this. And I wanna thank you guys for doing this because it's great to have a community event um, and to save money and time and grief, hopefully for our participants. So thank you guys for having me. Thanks for being with us, Maureen. Sure. So, we're, so tonight's presentation is going to be on how to administer an estate after a loved one passes. Mm -hmm. And I'm first going to um, just talk a little bit about Pennsylvanians for Modern Courts. We're having a little bit of trouble with our PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I'm sure that it'll be up before you know it. Um, Pennsylvanians for Modern Courts has been around. Oh, there it is. Wonderful. Thank you, Chelsea. PMC has been around for more than 30 years. Um, we are an only statewide nonpartisan nonprofit organization dedicated to ensuring that all Pennsylvanians come out come to courts with confidence um, that they will be heard by qualified and fair and impartial judges. Next slide, please. One more. Great. Um, PMC comes from a um, just a, a years of um, distrust through, um, through the courts uh, and our judges and a lot of uh, there was a few um, issues that took place years ago. So Governor Casey commissioned a blue ribbon panel of civic leaders, public officials, legal professionals, and members of the judiciary to examine judicial reform. Um, the panel discovered that confidence in the judiciary was appallingly low, in large part to, due to the system of electing judges and the fundraising that goes along with it. Um, so through this finding, um, we combined several scandals. I mean, I'm sorry, there were several scandals that took place in the 80s, which is what I mentioned. And this is the reason why we came up with and, and PMC was, was created. Next slide, please. Registers of will. Now I'd like to turn it over to Maureen. Okay, great. Um, so just wanna start with, this is the program is called Administering an Estate After a Loved One Dies. So the first thing I just want to talk about before I talk about the register of wills um, is that everybody has an estate. Like some people think, you know, an estate like is a, like a wealthy, like the estate of, you know, the Queen of England or something. But we all have estates, and it's almost like when you're born, you know, you're in the crib or whatever. That's your estate. So when you die, your estate is is really what you own. Um, and there's, there are a couple things in terms of an estate you want to know about, okay? So when we talk about administering an estate after a loved one dies, there are two big areas in terms of an estate, and one of them is your personal property, okay? So everybody has personal property. So personal property are things that can be moved, for example, like your furniture, jewelry, your car, bank account. So there, there are some personal property that's 
more expensive. Some people have like very expensive art collections or stamp collections or coin collections. I have a lot of people in Philadelphia, they love their bikes. <laughs> I, I must have so many people with personal property they have like a really expensive bike. So these are all things that when you die, you're go they're going to be generally subject to, to some kind of legal process in order to pass them over to your heirs. Um, and one other thing I just wanna know, your pet, I don't know if you guys knew this, is personal property. So I have a lot of clients that have pets. I don't know if you guys have pets. Um, Michelle, if you have a pet. Um, yes, I any, do. Yeah, so that is a big, so in terms of what, you know, what do I do with my pet after I die? You know, and, and in Pennsylvania has something called a pet trust that you can actually set up a trust for your pet and for care of your pet. I mean, some people bring their pet to like a daycare and it's expensive. You know, I have a client that uh, needs to give away their pet and, and move it to a different state. And what are they gonna do with delivering the pet? And so these, I mean, these animals are loved ones. They're like members of the family. So that's something we talk about. Um, and we talk about these things are sentimental value. People fight over them, like grandma's locket. You know, wh where is that going to go? So that's in terms of administering your estate, there's your personal property. And then there's what's called real property. And real property can't be moved. Like you can't pick it up and move it. So real property is land. Like let's say you have a farm. Um, some places in Western Pennsylvania, they're very agricultural. Um, it's your land and your home. Um, so let's say some people in Pennsylvania have vacation homes in New Jersey. So they have their residence where they live and then they have a vacation home uh, in New Jersey. So they have probate when they're administering their estate, they're gonna have probate in Pennsylvania where their home is and then they're gonna have probate in New Jersey also. So we'll talk about that later. Um, but. So you really want to know what your assets, the first thing is, what is my estate? So when you talk about like planning, do I have a lot of personal property? Do I have real property? Are there people that I want to give these, these things away to? Um, and do I want to create a plan, an estate plan? And do I want to give these things away to charity, for example? Um, so that's where a will is created. And, and so a will is created to give your personal property and your real property away and some specific bequests away. Like let's say $10,000 to Pennsylvania for modern courts, okay? So that, those things can be given away in a will. I just wanna make this clear though, a will gives things away that are in your own name Okay, just in your own name. That's what you give away in a will. So if you have a joint checking account with your husband or your partner or whoever, that joint checking account is not given away under a will. Okay, a will just is, is in your own name. Um, so some of the things we're talking about, like, do I need to probate an estate? Um, the first thing is setting up, figuring out what you're gonna draft in your will. Um, and then some people don't have a will. Okay, so that is another issue. If you, if you don't have a will, that is called intestate. Okay, that, that means that whatever you're gonna give away is going to be given away according to what the state of Pennsylvania says. So if you have a will, you pick out who you wanna give your property to or your sent and your valuables, your sentimental value. But if you don't have a will, the state of Pennsylvania is gonna tell you, okay, your spouse gets everything. So let's say you're ready to get, to, like you're having trouble with your spouse, okay? And you wanna get divorced, but you haven't done it and you're fighting and your spouse dies. Your spouse is gonna get everything. Okay, so that, that may not be what you want, okay? so. It's important to understand the distinction between those two and it gets much more complicated when you're administering your estate. Does that like make sense, Michelle? <laughs> Can you hear me? 
Yeah, I have to unmute myself. Yes, it does. Great, Maureen. And Maureen, it's Debbie. And everybody, it's I apologize for being- Oh, no problem. Traffic was a bear, but this has been great. And I learned about my pet. So I do <laughs> love that. That's really important. Exactly. I mean, it's so popular. I mean, it's it really is like with, as I, especially now, I call them pandemic pets. <laughs> Some people very have- Very true. <laughs> they've, uh, including myself. I have a cat that we got, his name is Brewster during the pandemic. So, I mean, there's also with emergency situations with the pet too, that's another thing we, we put in the will. Um, I mean, and I never would have thought of any of this. So this is great. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's really just, I like to get people thinking about things um, really is what it comes down to. So, okay, so let's say you do this, you get your will it drafted, right? And whether you need a lawyer. Um, and, and so this is, this is like, people are like, I have nothing. You know, I have some people like college students. I have, I don't have anything, you know, I don't need a lawyer. I mean, so there's some people that may not need a lawyer. They don't have that much. They have less than $10,000 to give away. They're not going to be subject to like a, a process after death, because if you have a very small estate, you're not going to have to what's called probate, meaning like administer the estate. So you're not going to have to do that. So sometimes you don't need a lawyer what i think is important is when someone dies and i don't know if, if um any of you have been through this process with loved ones maybe debbie or michelle you can tell me if you have you're running around i mean there's a lot going on i mean it's grief there's the funeral there's this there's that there's um fighting among relatives there's family members you know that you have to handle and deal with and everybody wants to help out but that's not always helpful I mean, it just becomes, and then there's that family member that comes that you haven't seen in 20 years and makes a scene. I mean, there's so many things that are going on. So it's like, okay, now do I hire? So the next thing is my loved one dies, right? And it's like, do I need an attorney for this estate? So I think it really depends on, first of all, your finances. Okay. Mm -hmm. what? And, and I think some of it depends though. Some of my clients say to me, Maureen, can I come in let's say for the first meeting. So I would recommend this. If, if you don't have a lot of money or time, I mean, some of these estates, if there's boats to sell, if there's vacation homes, if there's stocks, if there's fighting in family, there's so many different things that can go on. And even, I have to tell you guys this, even at the most simple estate can be complicated. And I was just going to say that, you know, sometimes you're better off having a neutral party mm -hmm. because it's very emotional. Yes. And and it's very hard for, you know, for siblings to, to recognize that while there's not a lot to, to maybe probate or to administer the estate, there's a lot of emotion and maybe some property pieces that people want, you know, and so it, sometimes it's really helpful to have a lawyer to just be that person to listen to you, to have an independent, you know, ear. Exactly, because people will fight over that personal property. So, I mean, it's, it's just, let's say it's, it's grandma's locket and it's a sentimental value piece. And, and there, it's just, it just doesn't even have to have a lot of value. And you're going to say, well, she, mom lived with me and I want that or this. Or, so there's so many different, so I always suggest just seeing that lawyer for that first meeting even. And just like Debbie said, have that objective person who can sit down and say, you know, okay, these are the steps that you have to do to go through an estate and distribute assets. Okay, so the first thing is about needing a lawyer, okay, is if, if you are appointed in the will, so when you prepare a will, you're going to appoint somebody to be the executor. And that person, I wanna make this really clear, that executor is on the hook for everything, okay? So if you accept that position, it is not the attorney. If you hire an attorney, it's not the attorney that's on the hook. It's you. So like if you become the executor and you have to distribute assets to very contentious brothers and sisters, okay? And if you make a mistake or you do something that they don't like, it doesn't even matter. And you may not have even made them. And they say, I'm going to sue. They're going to sue you. So you have to be very careful if you determine that you're gonna be in charge of distributing assets because let's just face it, when money's concerned, people will fight over a hundred dollars. I mean, so 
I just think that, that you really got to be careful. If you, if there's a willing, you're the executor. I would definitely go to the attorney and say, I'm the executor. What do I have to do? What are my responsibilities? So then you can say, I got legal counsel. I went through this. Some people as executors are very savvy. They've, they've been through the process before their parent has died. They have more time. I mean, this is, can be like a job. I mean, it, it is, there's so much paperwork and there are so many deadlines that you have to meet. And then if, and you're going to have your brothers and sisters bugging you and saying this, when can I get my money? <laughs> when can I get that $10,000? You know, so that I'm sorry stuff. to interrupt you for a second, but it's yeah. also really helpful if you are doing this on your own, that you really be an organized person, that you write everything down on almost an Excel spreadsheet, you know, who, who you, the death certificate, you know, who you yeah. sent, when you sent the request. And then like you, who, you know, the banks will request the death certificate. So you need to keep copies of every letter, everything, and keep it in a very organized fashion. So that's the other, I mean, that's a really good point, Debbie, because I, I feel like if you're not organized, I mean, that is where you really need an attorney. Because like when the, people come to me, like I have checklists and I've done it so many times <laughs> that I'll be like, okay, three months, we have to get this done. Six months, we have to get this done. Nine months. And, and so that's another reason if, if you're appointed and you're not organized to have somebody really organize and, and focus this, this process. Um, but I think in terms of, ex so executor is if you have a will, you and you're the one in charge of distributing assets, paying taxes, doing all these things that you're the executor. If you don't have a will and you die with that one in testate, then you would you would be called the administrator. Okay, so there's there's two different terms, but it's really the same process that you're that you're going to go about doing. And generally, this process takes about nine months. Um, where you want to get it all done in nine months, that doesn't mean it gets done in nine months. To be honest, I have probates that can last literally like three years. You can still. I just want people to really be warned about when they start doing this that you can't miss steps. You know, you really, you really wanna make sure that, you know, okay, am I supposed to tell the beneficiaries that they're receiving something? And the answer is yes. Because if one beneficiary doesn't know that they're receiving something and they don't get it, the executor is gonna be on the hook. So it's really important. Okay, I need to send out this certificate to all the people that are supposed to be getting something to say you can be getting something. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to miss that step. Um, and Debbie, you know that from like in terms of your practice, you're so familiar with the steps. Um, so it's it's interesting also because um, sometimes people may uh, may want a distribution or something before all the before the estate is actually um, complete, right? Yeah. So you know that's another problem which you have to deal with uh, you know do you decide maybe as the executor that okay the first ten thousand dollars we're just going to put in a bank account right now you know to distribute when when there's when more money comes in but yeah. sometimes uh, you know people seriously need to pay rent so you may also decide okay you know i will distribute the ten thousand dollars equally among all four siblings if that's what the will says but you know, there's th there needs to be an understanding in in your communications that this is not the entire state. This is just a part. Exactly. Of and then and then you're going to get people that need the money more. Um, you know, you have a lot of people that they do get uh, like in the will within a year once they get the asset, they get it and it's it's totally done. Like so, you could get a million. So sixty percent, I think, of people have spent it. So. You know, once you get these things, it, it's like, okay, I have this money and maybe I, like you said, maybe you need it for rent or different things, but um, let's just like, even before though, you administer estate, the estate, I just want this one thing in terms of the will, let's say you, you spend the money on a will, you, you have the attorney, you have your pet in there, you have things about cremation in there. That's very popular right now. People want to get cremated versus burials. I did a lot more of those years ago. So, but let's say you can't find it. I mean, this is, this is, happens more than you would ever think. 
So people are like, I don't know. I spent, I have no idea where that will is. So now you've spent all this money on this will. The register of wills, I think there was a slide on her. Um, you don't, wills are not kept at City Hall. So you are responsible once you get that document for keeping it. So I always suggest to people like, put it in a safe deposit box, a fireproof safe. I keep documents here. I used to keep a lot more originals, but now people are taking them. But you really, and you wanna be careful with that document. You don't wanna get rips. I've had people have coffee stains on. You know, you have to bring in the original will. This is really important. When you are taking that will to go to administer to probate to the register of wills, it ha that will is the original. So if you don't have an original, it's it's a hassle because you are now going to have to find a copy and you're going to have to petition to probate a copy. So this is just like more money and more time you're going to spend. So protect the original, protect what you've spent all this money on and make sure that whoever you picked as the executor should know where it is. Okay, so pick, this is another thing I want everyone to know, pick the right people to do this. And okay, so, you should actually have a discussion with somebody oh, absolutely. about being your executor. It shouldn't be something that surprises somebody mm -hmm. uh, after you have passed. So it is a very serious discussion because that person is undertaking a lot of responsibility. It's such a serious discussion. And I've noticed that, that people are communicating a little more these days versus 15 years ago. So it's not, it's, it's, it's like, okay, you know, I, I'm going to, um, I want to talk to you about helping me out after death. And you want to talk also like, you know, like I said, this could be a job, like whether the person should get some kind of fee for that. And I, I like to put that in my wills about the fee, just so it's sort of understand, understood because sometimes the other, so let's say you pick your favorite child who's like a financial whiz who lives in Philly and, and you're probating in Philly, that's like the best person. But then the other siblings get mad. Like they're like, oh no, you know, that's not fair. And, and she's getting a commission. So it goes back to that organization thing again. Okay, look at all the work I've been doing, you know, and, um, you know, I deserve some, but I think all of that should, should be discussed because that's where hard feelings, but it really is up to the person who's doing the will to discuss it. Like I can't make them do it. Right? Some people don't want to, um, and, and that's their right too. But I think more communication about, okay, would you like to be the executor? that particularly I think is really important. All right, so you have the will and you've located, let's just say you've located this will now, you found it and you now have some assets in the will and you, so those are assets in your own name that you've got to administer these assets. So that's what the process is a legal process called probate and every county is different. So like Montgomery County is different than, a little bit different than Philadelphia County. By the way, Montgomery County now has electronic filing. I'm, I'm shocked to hear that. They always had, they had paper before. Now they have electronic. In Philadelphia, um, we have what she's called the Register of Wills. Her name's Tracy Gordon. Um, and she's elected and she oversees the staff. And the staff is great there. Um, they've been there for many years. And it's, it's very difficult during the pandemic, I have to say to everybody that you're going to call up when you have this a probate, you would want to call up the register of wills to make an appointment. That is the first thing I would do, um, because your appointment now it's it's very backed up. You're going to probably wait eight weeks to get an appointment. So the number one thing before you even have all of your materials together, call up. I think I have the number here for you guys: two one five six eight six. 6250 is the register of wills number. You will wait a while on the phone, um, but just make that if you do not have an attorney, you have to do an in-person appointment, okay? If you have an attorney, then you can do a Zoom appointment and the attorney will make the appointment for you. So that there are some advantages to the Zoom appointment right now because I have some out-of-state people um, that are executors. So there's an advantage to that. So there's two different things. Either you're gonna have an attorney who can do the Zoom appointment for you, or you're gonna do the in-person appointment. But before you get anything together, call up and make the appointment. Um, Cause it's it's pandemic time and they're very, this is in Philadelphia, they're very backed up. Um, 
So once you get the appointment, I think we have the slide, you guys, on the um, death certificate and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, you got it right in front of me. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the right one. My bad. So anyway, so these are the things you've got to get together. You've got to get a death certificate, a certified copy. And so the death certificate you get from the funeral home, they generally have them. Okay. So, so if you're the, this is, if you're the executor, you get these things. So you get the, the death certificate, have your photo ID. You can use a passport or a um, non-driver's license or driver's license. This is in Pennsylvania. You're going to have to pay a probate fee. So I want everybody to know probate fees vary. It depends on the value of your estate. Okay. So there are charts online. They, on the Register of Wills website, you can go on there and it'll show the values, like if it's between 10,000 and 50,000 and 50,000 or 100,000. Um, so you pay different fees depending upon the value of your assets. In and, your, you know, and if you don't really know the value of the assets, mm -hmm. don't inflate. Oh. I would tell you to go the opposite direction yeah. Yeah. And, and estimate downward. Yeah. I mean, this is this is the other thing. So, you know, this is where planning comes in because these are assets. I just want people to understand, like these are assets, probate assets only. So when you're going there, you're not, you're not probating a joint checking account because that, so let's say it's husband and wife that automatically goes, if you die, you're the wife, it'll go to your husband. The only assets that are subject to the probate fee are the ones that are going through your will. A joint checking account, you don't get the asset through your will, okay? So that's where planning gets involved, where you can like save money if you do some, some things smartly. Um, that's, that's an area to use an attorney, I think. But anyway, okay, so you, so you wanna have the fee uh, in Philadelphia, it's credit card. You can't give a personal check. Um, so you wanna have that ready uh, to pay the probate fee. And you're going to make that in-person appointment, but here's where you want to have everything organized um, to make sure. Let's see if I'm missing anything. And the executor is the one that is going to do this appointment and walk over to room 180 at City Hall. And you're not going to meet with the Register of Wills. You, you'll meet with one of the clerks and they're, they're great. They've been doing it for a while. Um, I'm not sure how it's going now with the pandemic. Um, so when you go over to the register, um, these are some things that you're going to have to do. So this is, goes back to the organization again. So you're going to have to have a lot of information ready. So you want to have just sit down and get this information prior, just about there's information about you, the executor, and there's going to be information about the estate. So you're going to have to talk about the assets in the estate. You're going to have to have the, the decedents, the person who's died, you're going to have to have their social security number, their address. Um, you're going to have to have their date of birth, date of death. So, th so there's information that you're going to have to produce. You're going to have to talk about on the estate information sheet um, and the, in the petition, you're going to have to say who the beneficiaries are. Um, so you want to complete these and, and have them organized. It's best to just make sure it's all filled out before you get there because you don't want to get there and just be scurrying around. Um, I usually, when I go, like I tell people, make a couple of copies, just just like so you have them with you. Just if you have to change something, I, I, sometimes they're they're pretty nice over there. So I think you can like make some changes. Um, I feel like some people can go online and find these forms and get them, but I have some seniors, and and some even non seniors. <laughs> There are no, there's no way they're going to get online and fill out these forms. I don't know, Deb, do you think that's, I mean, I just think this is just a lot for someone. So, and a half. so the, pro, the, the biggest issue is that the Pennsylvania court system has a lot of forms on its web. Mm -hmm. So that's what's hard trying to maneuver it. But once you find it, filling out the forms is not that difficult. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can search for them. You could actually put in the term, you know, um, mm -hmm. petition for grant of letters. Again, it's not like that's a that's a top a title that mm -hmm. you would know, right? It, it it should be some it should be an easier title, you know. I think so too. Planning or you know will something, but 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 this is that's what is called it is called in Pennsylvania, but mm -hmm. it's on the website. There's a tremendous amount of forms on the website, so 
you know, you know it now and you can search right. for it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's easy to search for because it says, right? Okay, so on the website, as like the one side on the left side, it says, I think the last, it says forms. So, I mean, you literally hit the form button and all of, the, I don't want people to be um, upset because they're, they're, there's a tremendous amount of forms that show up. Like there's oath of subscribing witness there, you know, and, and you're not going to know what that is necessarily. So I think you, you made a good point. Deb, because if you look for this petition for grant of letters, so you want to really look through these forms, look for a state information sheet. It's going to ask you, do you have Adobe? Um, and you want to make sure when you hit the form that you don't have a pop-up blocker on. So, you, so for that site, just take your pop-up blocker off. Um, but so a state information sheet, petition for grant of letters, and that those two forms you have to fill out to bring with you that these this is to actually open the estate. Um, and here it says the two the difference is letters testamentary is when you have a will and letters of administration when you don't. The difference when you don't have a will is you're going to have to get people. So let's say you pick an exec, you're going to have to now pick an administrator. You're not going to have one in your will. And the other people that do not get picked have to renounce. They're saying they're not now. That doesn't mean they're renouncing their estate or their assets just means that they don't want to be executor. I have a lot of issues with different families with this part. Okay. Cause people don't want to renounce. They go to, they go to court. They say, I'm not doing that. You're not being executor. You can spend time and money on this part. So this is one reason to have a look. <laughs> okay. So, you know, you don't start like uh, with all this and um, you know, with adopted kids, it gets more complicated. There's so many reasons to have a will, but we're not going to get into that today because that would be a whole another session that I'd be doing. So um, letters of administration, when you don't have a will, letters testamentary, they're basically the same thing. Okay. So when you sit down, what happens is you're going to then get a form that you are appointed with this nice gold seal. You'll get it 14 days after you meet over at 180 City Hall. And it's going to say that you're appointed. It's going to say the date of your appointment. And this is really valuable, this form. You want to make sure to hold on to that, keep that nice and like don't rip it or get it stained. But I would get short certificates. Um, so short certificates are $10. And those are, those are what you want to bring to the bank. Like those are just you have your nice gold seal, your long form, but short certificates are shorter. Um, and, and they bank knows what they are and they're just easier to carry. So I usually tell my clients, depending upon how many assets they are, they have, like you don't wanna use them for, if like if you have bank or real estate, you can use them. But if you only have two assets, just maybe get two. Maureen, do you have to ask for a short certificate? Yes, you do. So on that um, petition for, grant of letters on that it says that's a really good question it'll say short certificates how many do you want right. and so you'll put two and then you'll say like it'll well, say and i would actually say it's better to order extra because I think, I think so. you need you need places who don't want copies they actually want an official form so um you know, I tell people that they should make sure that they have enough copies, you know, because otherwise then you're going to have to go back again to the register wills and ask for more. And then that's a delay. Yeah, I, yeah. I would rather have that like more than less. Right. And, and I think they just make a lot of sense. Um, and, and they're relatively inexpensive. They're 10, you know, they're 10 dollars. So, um, but you ask when you're sitting down with the, the clerk over at the orphan's court, even if you didn't fill out the form, so don't be like a, if you didn't fill out these things and you're doing the, this yourself on your petition for grant and they go, how many shorts do you want? Now you'll know, you know, you'll say, okay, maybe I'll take three shorts. So you bring that short over with you to the bank or if you're selling a home or to your investment house, wherever you should have them with you. I like to carry these things around with me, just keep them. Um, because you never know sometimes when you, when you might be like close to a bank and you have to do something that you just need it. So, um, so I think next slide. Oh no, there's more in here. Um, so within the first three months, this is really important. I just want to bring up about there is a, there was a slide about taxes. You can prepay your inheritance taxes. I want everyone to like take note of this in the first three months 
It's not in New Jersey, but in Pennsylvania. So I always advise generally to pay this, okay? It doesn't mean you have to fill out any of the inheritance tax forms. It means you have to calculate what the inheritance tax is gonna be. Now, I realize sometimes you, you may not have the funds to pay that, but this is sort of where, like if you have a life insurance policy, a lot of times life insurance policies are used for this reason. So it saves you 5% on your taxes. And so if you can, if you have liquid assets that let's say the tax is like, I don't know, $5,000. If you got a life insurance policy, you can pay that tax and save 5%. So that's just, I want everyone to understand that that's only in Pennsylvania. It's not in New Jersey, but it's something you were, see, this is where about hiring an attorney, but now you're hearing it here helps you because you're not going to know, you're, you're not going to know that I'm going to save 5%. You know what I mean? Um, and, and so that's where you got to be careful. Like, I'll use the life insurance for that, but I can't use beneficiaries' money for that. You know what I mean? Um, so that that's something to be aware of. In the first three months, you've got to get that that done. Uh, let's see. So, in the first three months, the other thing that I always recommend these are the different obligations that the executor is going to have. Okay, um, paying off debt is a big one. Okay, and so there's an order of debts. So you don't, when you're an executor, you're gonna have to pay pay beneficiaries, meaning the heirs, the, whatever they are supposed to get, but you're also gonna have to pay off debts. And you will have debts, debtors calling as executor, they'll send you things. You will have people also, if you're selling a house, I don't know how many times, I mean, I've gotten so many, from different estates of people wanting to buy my my uh, client's house. I mean, you'll you'll get bombarded with this. Okay, so you want to be careful of how you pay off debts. Okay, so remember, don't just start when you get like let's say you get a debt in the mail and you're like, oh my god, I just got eleven thousand dollar debt from Home Depot. What what do I do? Should I pay it? You really want to be careful and don't start paying. Okay, you want to. First, the first thing is to advertise, okay? In Pennsylvania, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, I use a service, but you wanna advertise in two papers within the first three months that someone has died. This isn't the same as an, an obituary. This is just to notify creditors. This is how they do it in Pennsylvania. It's not the same in other states that someone has died. And so you're doing it in a legal and a non-legal paper for three weeks, okay? And so that, once you put that ad in, that's when creditors, I think they have people to look through those ads are going to be like, okay, now I'm going to, then you'll start receiving different credit reports. I mean, I receive a lot of stuff. I want everybody to be careful of this. I've gotten a lot of like different credit cards or different things from clients where the client has died and there's interest payments. The credit card still proceeds to charge interest. Okay. So you really want to be careful when you're looking this back to the organization, but being meticulous, okay, when I get this credit card bill, are there payments on here? My client died in January. Is this credit card still charging me interest after my client's death? So couldn't somebody be proactive, let's say, mm -hmm. and you know, it had you find it, you call all the credit card companies and say, you know, this person has passed away. Mm -hmm. You know, please put a halt, first of all, this is actually important put a halt to the credit card because you don't want somebody else. Absolutely. You know, actually, people, unfortunately, there are bad actors out there, oh, I would say. Yeah. And they find out that somebody has died and then they find a way to get to access that person's Absolutely. credit card. So it's really important for you to call the credit card companies and make sure that the credit cards are, you know, are terminated, right? So that, Absolutely. that and, ask, and tell the credit card companies, stop, you know, accumulating interest. We'll pay you as soon as I get all of the debts together. Absolutely. So I agree. So within the first three months, I think this is one of the first things you should do is call up the credit card company right away. A person has died, call up the social security administration. You know, someone has died, stop, stop the payment, you know, that kind of thing. And also the mail, get the mail forwarded to your house. You know, that's another thing. Another thing the executor has to do, this is an important one too, let's say you inherit the property and, and you're like, uh-oh, that property is in kind of like poor condition or whatever. And 
you you need to protect whatever you inherit. You have to now you're responsible to protect that. So I always say get the locks changed and get insurance on that property. Okay, because like if you inherit a property, what if something happens and there's a fire? Okay, so you there are insurance companies. You, you're during the probate process, you get some kind of protection for yourself. But it's also protection when you get that home insurance on that property. You're the executor. You're protecting you. Remember, we go back to that again. You know, you don't want also beneficiaries saying, "Oh, there's a fire. Why didn't you get home insurance on that property?" All right. So, so there, and and that could also, and that really applies. For example, not only just okay, somebody lives in the house, but what happens if you know somebody is has a has a unit that it rents out that they rent out. So that there is a tenant, the the tenant is still in the unit, and there is still an obligation Absolutely. to make sure that that unit complies, with, you know, the laws, and that you have insurance on it. So it's really important. So that's another thing, right? Exactly. So if you have tenants, let's say, so tenants sometimes believe that, oh, you're died. I don't have to pay rent anymore. That that's, that's something that happens. Um, but also tenants, you know, there's a renter's license. So that the executor has to make sure that that's up to date. You have to keep the insurance up. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you, have, you know, when you take on this responsibility that, that you have to make sure that, that the tenants now are aware that there's a changeover. But once you get those letters, that's when you can do all these things, okay? So that's the first thing. That's why I would say call up and make that appointment because you don't, you don't have any power to deal with the estate really until you get those letters. So like when I said rental license, like you can't go in and deal with it until you're actually appointed as an executor or an administrator, okay? Um, so debts, be careful because I usually pay them off in a certain order. There's different orders, like funeral parlor has to be paid. There's unsecured and secure credit cards. You want to be careful of how you pay things. And, and the bottom line is you're going to have to, within nine months, pay off inheritance taxes. Okay, so that you're going to have to pay those debts and pay those inheritance taxes. I recommend doing those things, the nine months, paying the taxes, paying the debts, and then distributing the assets. But make sure that the tax is paid as Debbie mentioned, if somebody needs, let's say you're supposed to get a hundred thousand and they need ten thousand, you may want to give it to them. But you know, be careful because those things you're on the hook again. If you're the executor, uh oh, I'm, I paid out ten grand and my tax, I don't have enough money to pay tax. Well, now you're going to have to go back to the beneficiary and set. You know, so this is this is really where an organization comes into play and timing of when you pay things. Um, so transferring real property is another big thing. So this is, this is an important point. When, when you die, okay, so your house, let's say you, your mom dies and you inherit, you inherit the house, you're the only beneficiary, you're the only daughter. You will immediately get legal title to that, okay? You get legal title. So your mom died, you, you're the one who gets it. But the issue is, you have to pay the inheritance taxes and update that deed because then that's when the title is technically transferred. You might have legal title, but you've got to make sure this is done because what happens is, okay, let's say you get the property and you don't pay inheritance taxes, you don't update the deed, and then you wanted to give it to your grandkid. And then what happens is if you don't update the deed and you just give it to your grandkid, the title becomes completely clouded. Like, this happens all the time. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a serious problem. So I always recommend if you don't pay your inheritance taxes within nine months, you don't legally own that property. Like you have to pay those taxes. So, and if you don't pay them, then you're going to have interest accruing. So when you get something as valuable as that, you want to really protect it, do all these things like change the locks, get insurance, pay the inheritance taxes, and then transfer the deed and update the deed. I mean, I, I don't know, this is an epidemic in Philadelphia, Deb, I don't know if you, you know, with Tangled Title. Um, it's, it's Right, a, there is a problem in, I think, in Pennsylvania with Tangled Title. Yeah. And Tangled Title means that that the person who thinks they own, or, you know, they're living in the house right. maybe, or own, owns the property, isn't actually the person on the title. Mm -hmm. And the problem also is that then the property somehow gets can be taken from you by that's, others who are looking through it. 
uh, the deeds and and notice that some you know notice that somebody has passed away. Exactly. So on the deed, so you really need to make sure that everything is current. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to rush you along a little bit because we are. Oh my. Okay. And then open your estate account. That's just the one thing. Um, I don't know where we are. Okay. So open an estate account is another thing. You the estate. I just want to tell everybody is a legal entity. Okay. So when you open an estate account. It's in the in the estate of let's say Maureen Farrell. Okay, so just make sure you do that, and you'll get a separate EIN number, and you're going to pay everything off out of the estate account. Um, file tax returns. We said within nine months, and you've got to look at income tax returns, other returns. Um, sometimes people haven't paid their income tax for years. I mean, there's there's a lot of problems that happen. Always go in the house and try to clean it out. I mean, I have people finding savings bonds, Star Starbucks gift cards. Mon I mean, people find all kinds of things in the house, so make sure you do that. Um, let's see. We did that slide. So we talked about, about the notice. We and those are really important. Yep. Okay. Identify assets. So this is, I mean, this was what you were talking about, right? You're opening in the state checking account. Right. But also, like, note we didn't say this, but notifying institutions. I was talking about banks, but also you need to notify Social Security. I mean, that's an important entity that. Absolutely. So notifying everyone is is really important, and as soon as possible. But the the estate account is really important because you can actually take up. This is another point. Up to ten thousand dollars out of a bank without probating it. Um, so that's that's another thing. But you know it causes problems if you take out the $10,000 because then the heirs or the beneficiaries are like, where did it go? And it's a whole other story. But so if you open the estate account, um, you're going to go online and you're going to get an EIN number. And that, because of the pandemic, has taken a little longer, but make sure that you do that. And then when you go to the bank, you're going to bring that short certificate with you. Right. You're going to bring sure. your ID and you're going to bring um, maybe the death certificate and you sit down, but you have to have that number when you go to the bank. So you have to wait online for them to give you the number. Once you have the number, then you bring that over to the bank and then they'll give you checks um, for the estate account and pay everything with those checks. Okay, because you don't want to start mixing your personal with the estate. Remember, the estate is its own legal entity. Your personal is your personal. The decedent's personal is, is their personal. So that's an important. And that's really important. You are a fiduciary. You have legal obligations. It, absolutely. You, and you do not want to be sued, right? Because absolutely. you have undertaken this 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 job. Really, that's what. That's it is. right. That's right. And it, it really is. So um, you know, it takes a while, and so people don't realize, you know, how many steps there are. I think maybe this is. So this is showing how many steps there are. I feel like some of the, you know, these are some of them, but eventually you're going to have to wrap up the estate. I think there's a status report slide, I believe. <clears throat> so inventory is another thing that you're going to have to list. Okay, this is at the ninth. So the three months we talked about taxes, we talked about um, calling everybody, social security, forwarding mail, funeral home. Then we talk at six months, you know, different things you're gonna wanna do that we'll, we talk about that in my office, but inventory form by nine months, you're gonna fill out all the probate assets, okay? It's not the non-probate. Um, and that's something to talk about a little bit more too. Remember like probate or things that go through your will, non-probate assets are like joint checking account, property that goes is in joint names okay remember i said that wills are only things in your own name so like if you have a property owned jointly with your husband or wife or significant other that doesn't go through probate okay that's an important distinction but if like i'm a single woman and i have a property then it's going to go to somebody i say it's going to go to in my will that's going to go through probate because that's like a planning type of thing um, so your inventory form, you're going to fill out and you're going to bring that to the register of wills also. Okay. Um, so one thing about taxes, when you file these taxes, you're going to make two copies and you're going to bring them over to the re register of wills is your friend. You guys notice that <laughs> you're, you're going to do a lot of going over there or sending things. Um, that's where the attorney there is for the attorney. There's e-file that you can file them. So when you do the taxes, you're going to bring them over to, there's an inheritance tax. I think it's room 182, I think. 
and you make two copies and they will make sure they timestamp them. Okay, so that you, cause if you're even a day late, then you're gonna, they're gonna penalize you for a late fee. I just wanna say something about this. If you haven't finished the paperwork for this, okay, we could do a whole separate section that like seminar just on this, this. Um, just pay the tax and then you can get a six month extension to finish the paperwork, okay? That's, that's what I would recommend because sometimes the paperwork can get overwhelming. Um, you don't get all the information you need. Like I have executors are still waiting for information. So just do that. Just, just pay the tax and then you can get the six month extension. Funeral costs are a big thing. Um, and this is sort of the order that we're talking about. Um, and you want to pay them. A lot of times people have funeral, like they have a, a life insurance policy for that. And when you pay your taxes, I just want to say the inheritance tax, there are a lot of deductions that you can make. So this is where you want to keep track of all your receipts. So like a funeral, a luncheon, if you had that, um, paying your attorney, all the probate costs we talked about, you want to keep those receipts. It's nothing is too small. So I say to people, just everything just give me everything i don't even care if you like took a taxi to whatever because i want to make the judgment i want to try to save you money on those deductions um and and like let's say you have a house and the and the electrical you need to make a repair a repair is different than a renovation okay you can take a deduction for that um so this is where i think another point about an attorney deb is like when you're filling out the inheritance tax return i recommend talking to an attorney about this part because you know, it's, it's just, there's so many little things that can go wrong with that um, and making those deductions and filling out that form. So the two areas I would definitely recommend, the beginning and this inheritance tax return. I'm gonna just interrupt one more time and just say that I know, I've been monitoring the q and I don't see any questions. Okay, good. But if anybody has any, please put them in. So- um, I, I, okay, I no problem. Two minutes left. Sorry. Oh, two minutes left. Okay. Yes. So there actually, wanna... there actually was one question. So okay. The question is: Her mom died several weeks ago. There is an outstanding balance at the nursing home. Should she pay the bill? She does have access to her account. I think, or it depends on the. There may be other bills, and I don't know how much is in the estate. So, I mean, if if she believes that her mom has a ton of other bills, you may want to wait. Um, I don't recommend so necessarily paying it. So the right reason, away. and the important thing you have to understand is that there could be a lot of bills that are outstanding. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to treat creditors differently. Right. right. It's and you want to- really important. And yeah, so you may and, end up negotiating- That's with another thing. Creditors to say, look, this is the totality of the estate and this is all I can pay. That's absolutely. So I do it a lot of that too in this office and negotiating. So I would like for this woman, I mean, if she feels like it's, it's a bill and she can pay it and there's a lot more of the estate, um, but I would wait to advertise. And then once she advertises, creditors will start coming and they have a year from the advertisement to make their claims. Um, so I wouldn't jump the gun necessarily, but I, I would wait a little bit to see what other creditors come in, but I would have to talk to her to find out a little bit more about the estate. Um, but and I just want to, I'm just going to caution everybody that yeah. we can't give legal advice on That's this right. program. We're not giving legal advice. It's all educational information. Right. Um, but you know, I, we are, we have not been retained by anybody. How's that? So and also to... because I don't have enough information. So it would be very hard. Like when I give legal advice, I have to have the whole picture. You know what I mean? So I can't just so based on we are at the end, I know okay. that this recording will be available. Um, it'll be on PMC's website. I think yep. the library will also have it. We okay, will great. circulate the uh, slides. We'll be able, we can send them a PDF of the slides to everybody who has attended. Mm -hmm. um, and Maureen, I just want to say thank you. This was terrific. It was engaging, informative, and it's really good to see you on Zoom because I haven't seen <laughs> Maureen is a year and a half or a year and a half now. So yeah. Thank you for doing this. For I want to thank you guys for having me. And, and Philadelphia I just, Library, thank, yes. thank you as well for having us. All right. Um, this is really special. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.